Dear brothers and sisters, this is a homily for the Feast of Epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany is about the manifestation or revelation of God as seen in the readings of today, where God reveals himself to Jews as well as Gentiles. Who is the fourth wise man today? Why do Magi want to see the Messiah? What is the meaning of the star in this passage? Indeed, these are some of the questions that will guide us in this Sunday reflection. To begin with, the story of the Magi is only found in Matthew's Gospel. We can understand the events that unfolds through the Magi or wise men from the East by dividing this Gospel passage of today into two major parts. One, the Magi or wise men at Jerusalem. Two, the Magi after Jerusalem. We can start with the Magi at Jerusalem. Who are the Magi or wise men? They are the Babylonian astrologists, magicians and diviners at that time. In addition to that, they were even considered as kings because of them being wise in the society. The story of the Magi become a subject of interest to us because Matthew reports that they are from the east and that is where the sun rises from. After seeing the star, they perfectly understood that a new king of Jews has been born at Bethlehem. Therefore, they begin the journey towards Bethlehem through Jerusalem, the heart of Jewish people. Something worth noting also in this passage is that here, Matthew does not mention or indicate how many Magi they were. However, according to the Christian traditions, it is popularly known that they were three Magi, most probably because of the three gifts they offered to the new king of the Jews, the Messiah. When they arrive at Jerusalem, things got complicated despite being tired, hungry, and even thirsty. Another complication comes from the disappearance of the star. Third difficulty comes from Herod and his wise men who were completely against the newly born Messiah at Bethlehem. Indeed, the Magi find themselves covered by the dark clouds at that moment. After knowing that there is a newborn king of the Jews, Herod convenes a meeting of all the people in Jerusalem, including the chief priests and the scribes, who interpret the scripture correctly by pointing to the fact that the Old Testament prophecy concerns the Messiah who would be born at Bethlehem. This prophecy was based on the prophecy that is found in the book of prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 1. More interestingly, the Jews attributed this prophecy to the Messiah that was to be born at Bethlehem. There are two important lessons that we can get from the meeting convened by Herod at Jerusalem. One, Herod and his wise men remain indifferent to the newly born Messiah at Bethlehem. In fact, Herod does not know where and who is born, whereas the religious authorities knows where the newborn king of Jews is to be born, but they don't know who it is in reality. This is simply to say that they interpret the scriptures very well, but they don't put it into practice. The second lesson is the good example of the Magi or the wise men. Because the Magi were wise, they profit from the interpretation of the scripture to strengthen their belief in the Messiah. 
This is good news because they did not need only the star to reach Bethlehem where was the Messiah, but they needed also scriptural backup in order to understand the newly born king of the Jews, the Messiah. Now, the second part in this gospel is the Magi after Jerusalem. After having listened to the prophecy from the scriptures, the Magi found again the star, and this time round, it leads them up to Bethlehem. When they arrive, they adore him and manifest their gratitude by offering him gifts of gold to symbolize his kingship, frankincense, which symbolizes his divinity, and ma, which meant suffering that he would undergo. After having accomplished their mission of paying homage to the Messiah, the Magi returned to their country by using another route so that they may avoid Herod. We can say that after having met the Messiah, the Magi changed their way of life. When we meet Christ, do we experience conversion? After Holy Mass, do we experience conversion? After listening to the Word of God, do we experience conversion? In this passage, the star does not only mean what we see in the sky, but rather Matthew refers also to the prophecy in the book of Numbers chapter 24 verse 17, which says, There shall come a star out of Jacob. And this prophecy finds its fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, the star could be the capacity or something that leads us to God. The star could be our talents that God gave us so that we may use it to serve him through others. Again, the star could be a successful member in a family or in a society. More interestingly, the three wise men saw the star and chose to follow it, whereas the wise men of Herod did absolutely nothing about it. Let us be the fourth group of wise men today by following the true star and scriptural readings that will lead us to God. Sometimes the star disappears in our life, but let us be reoriented by his word to regain the sight of the star. Is Christ our real star? Let him illumine and warm our hearts with his love, grace, and peace Amen. Have a blessed Sunday and Happy New Year.